Cyclonic activity around Australia continues on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for January 4th. Well then, around the world we have the resumption of tropical storm status for Ellie, it would appear, according to our analyst team, although I still shed doubt over whether it was actually the same system or not. Nonetheless, if bomb follow with that, uh, they will name it the same as it was before as well. So we're pretty confident in that at least. 148 days until Atlantic hurricane season and this is what it looks like across the Atlantic right now. Very quiet which is good news apart from two frontal systems there, one of them causing severe weather in the United States today. Looking elsewhere then, the action is around the Australian region as I alluded to with Ellie and two areas of interest. Ellie emerging off the west coast of Australia, one area of interest in the Gulf of Carpentaria and one near Vanuatu. A 10% chance heading into the South China Sea to the west of the Philippine Islands um, and that is also going to be lurking over the next few days there as it heads towards Vietnam. The Indian Ocean, the open ocean at least, is remaining quiet by the looks of things. There's nothing expected there in the next five days and as you can see it's uh, quite a pretty picture with very little cloud cover in the area, although quite a few thunderstorms over Madagascar and Mozambique today. So that's a look around the most important parts of the world today. Let's take a look at some satellite imagery beginning with rainfall uh, totals in the last 24 hours or at least rainfall distribution around the world. You can see in some of those red areas those are the hot spots of where we've had the most rainfall in the last 24 hours around Ellie's area there as well as over uh, South America as well by the looks of things. All right, here's some rapid scan imagery uh, from the Himawari satellite. I'm not sure whether this is using 8 or 9. I'm pretty sure 8's dead by now. Uh, so this is what we have right now. Must be Himawari 9 looking at this rotation um, over the Kimberley region right now and is about to just get close to moving out over water here. Uh, this is Ellie. Still a lot of bit of a dry slot there on the southern side of it, but convection has been generally ramping up over the last uh, day or two. Two. So interesting to look at, lots of rainfall expectations over the coastal areas right along the coastline now over the next few days to go on top with, of what we've already seen across the interior parts of northern and western Australia which has caused some serious flooding issues. Here's a more zoomed out view as we see daybreak over the region, last few hours of imagery and you can see that the storm is quite lopsided particularly on the western side, eastern side there has really been uh, taken away quite devoid of any real activity there on the southeast quadrant particularly. Looking at an even wider viewing angle there you can see that disturbance as well over the Gulf of Carpentaria which we're looking at possibly getting some kind of rotation. Interestingly the models have changed on both systems uh, giving them more land interaction in both cases so the chances of both of them getting stronger are decreasing at least in this update. Moving further north across the equator, right on the other side towards the Philippines, you can see a lot of rainfall occurring there right now and lots of storms approaching. Um, two disturbances you could say, a two in one feature almost, but will probably end up fighting with each other to try and become uh, a tropical cyclone. There's really little chance that either of them will succeed. Um, if one of them does, then it will be for a very brief period in the South China Sea as they may acquire just that little bit of rotation needed. And here's another view on uh, visible imagery of how uh, Ellie has evolved there as well, looking decent. Let's check sea surface temperatures around the world. Now these are in Fahrenheit, um, so you'll have to pardon the conversions there. 80 degrees is around about 27 degrees Celsius, and that's just a little bit above the threshold needed. So if you see 80s on the screen, and that's prime for tropical cyclone development. Plenty of areas in the Caribbean still holding on to it, even though we're in January, and we're just putting this on for illustration, really. We're not going to get any storms there. And warm temperatures continuing in the equatorial regions. 
Indian Ocean, a little bit more interesting. Uh, you can see those temperatures into the 80s there, 27 degrees Celsius. And in the southern Indian Ocean, which we're watching a lot more acutely, those temperatures are warmer as well, 28, maybe pushing 29 in a few areas in the deep tropics. And also in the Mozambique Channel, bit of a heat wave going on there as well by the looks of things. Temperatures quite cool off the west coast of Australia in those higher latitudes. Uh, but further north, towards the equator, temperatures looking really good around the Australian region, over 28 to 29 degrees Celsius, probably pushing 30 uh, in a lot of those areas. These read a little bit low. Same too from the Vanuatu region towards Fiji. And also in the Western Pacific, in the deep tropics there as well, temperatures still holding strong too. And into the South China Sea, at the low latitudes where these systems might end up, there's still a chance there as well. Well, that was a quick roundup whistle stop tour. Sea surface temperature anomalies, they are slightly above average in the Western Pacific, which might give rise to that little bit of activity. The Nino effect is still very much there, but breaking down it would appear. And in the Atlantic, it is generally above average, but that counts for very little. The Australian region is actually slightly below average, um, except in the Coral Sea region, which is well above. So that's probably my tip for activity, at least in the next few weeks. Oceanic heat content is on strong as well, north of Fiji and Vanuatu there, really deep colours. Um, moving further southwards, there's still quite a bit of energy there as well. And in the Western Pacific, in case we get any more activity, then uh, the, the really, those have really dropped off since December. Uh, very low amounts now in the tropical zones, only the equatorial zones are still really high. All right, then let's check the uh, GFS computer model and take a look at these two little signatures. You can see them rifling through there towards the west and both of them are coexisting there for a little period. Uh, lots of gale force winds, lots of rainfall for the Vietnam, uh, possibly getting up above 500 millimeters in some places and there's a storm total for this double event, you could call it. The Philippine Islands as well, uh, they've seen most of the rainfall from that first system and that second one will come in with another 250 millimeters of rainfall at least for many parts of the Visayas and southern Luzon. Here's Ellie. GFS doesn't have it moving off the coast anymore, which is really remarkable considering how close it is right now, and actually dying off fairly quickly by the 7th or the 8th of January as it moves inland. Very broad system there it's depicting with that wind field. It does get a little bit stronger, maybe towards 50 miles per hour, but then moving inland and starting to weaken. That's a far cry from what we saw in earlier model runs, which were calling for a Category 2 yesterday. And this is the uh, South Pacific, looking out for two potential systems, Gulf of Carpentaria and towards Vanuatu. It is a real mess there right now. There's a system moving off the Cape York Peninsula. That was the Gulf of Carpentaria system. And all of this uncertainty makes it one of the most unpredictable basins in the world, actually, especially at this time of year when you've got all of this line of showers and windiness and rotation can really result out of any of those little areas. Fascinating. This is the precipitation chart then for the Australian region and more attention will probably start to be focused east now because even though Ellie is still going, uh, the rainfall amounts are actually going to be higher for the Cape York Peninsula in the next five days. That's not to discredit Ellie's potential though. On top of what we've already seen, we could still be looking at over 10 inches of rain, or 12 there, that's 300 millimeters, well inland as well. But look at the Cape York Peninsula there, pushing 16 inches of rain, that's 400 millimeters in total. And on the east coast as well, from the storm or that system's uh, continuation, there as it moves towards the east coast of Queensland up towards 250 millimeters in some areas up there. Check the longer range this is day 5 through 10 and take a look at what appears nothing much at first but eventually we start to see another system try to develop in the Gulf of Carpentaria there very short-lived and it tries to wrap around and then move inland another one that actually gets stronger as it moves inland there we see that a lot in the Australian region I mean goodness me look at Ellie um, but apart from that, nothing much else there in that region. Little area off Western Australia trying to spiral up there, but I doubt that will come to anything. Well, that's the important stuff done with. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We offer animations bespoke to your liking and our usual merch line. And they're still waiting for Hone t-shirt. We thought we might have got it for Christmas, but unfortunately Santa didn't deliver Hone. Ah. <sighs> 
Let's check the Scilly range then, day 10 through 16, this is what we have in the southwest Indian Ocean, nothing major but a tropical cyclone that tries to develop, a very broad one actually and really tries to get a hold of itself but <laughs> really struggles there, gets towards high end tropical storm status, extremely long way out so I doubt we'll be looking at that much at least yet but that is potentially a little heads up there for Madagascar around the 17th 18th of January and looking back at Australia for maybe some more activity well there's that system that continues to move eastwards and then out over the uh, Coral Sea and doesn't seem to do much else so I think we're just looking at that little system there that tried to develop a uh, very unpredictable time of year for this area and certainly a lot of rainfall expected in the next few weeks by the looks of all this across northern Australia thankfully nothing in the northern hemisphere to look at in the long range on this day though we had cyclone Ando in Janu on January the 4th 2001 which was peaking as a category 3 on this day to the east of Madagascar you can see all the other imagery of the world that happened on this day as well looks like a really chunky extropical system approaching Europe there and a frontal system just off the southeastern United States elsewhere around the world it looked pretty normal no other tropical systems were active I think Ando was enough to keep our eyes on at that moment in time in any case with its rather pinhole eye there almost but some dry dry slot by the looks of things on the western side well we've entered a new year and we were hoping to do tropical weather bulletins earlier than this but we finally got one out the next name on the atlantic naming list for the first time is arlene oh yes that naming list is back in the eastern pacific it's adrian and in the central pacific it's hone in the Western Pacific, next up on uh, the naming list is Sanvu, and in the North Indian Ocean, it's Mocha. We've had one storm so far, if we're counting LE Part 2, and the average per year is 92. Last year saw 93 in the end. The next name in the Australian region is Freddy, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Chaniso, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.